Hello everyone. We're here again with the final portion that we are teaching of the letter that Paul wrote to the church of Rome. Starting from Romans chapter 1 through his final passage of his letter, we find one unique thing that we must all learn and understand. The topic is ministers, ministry to the unbelievers. Now notice, ministry to the unbelievers. Paul did not direct the letter to unbelievers. He directed the letter to the church at Rome. Paul knew inside the church of Rome were believers and, unbeliev and unbelievers, wheat and tear. As a result of knowing that, in the first part of Paul's letter, he gave a list that each person inside that congregation could know whether or not they were unbelievers or not. He gave a list, and that same list applies to us today to know whether or not we are believers or unbelievers sitting in the congregation of a natural church. So we need to understand that not everyone who sits among us is a believer. Not everyone who sits among us is a believer. And Paul pointed this out without saying that. So what he did, he gave, he outlined a list for you to self-identify. He didn't point fingers. He gave a list for we to self-identify as to whether or not we are a believer or an unbeliever. And like we know what the word of God says, let the wheat and the tear grow together. And we know that wheat and tear inside the congregation sit side by side. Wheat and tear look exactly alike. Wheat like, look like tear, tear look like wheat. But tear is no good in the body of Christ. So Jesus said, let the wheat and the tear grow together. And that he was going to separate. We need to look now as we close out this study in Paul. Whether we are wheat or tear. Because in further writings that Paul and other apostles put out. And he never addressed this and again. Paul addressed it. Because he was the apostle. The teacher to the Gentiles. And we're going to see he said this in today's lesson. So we have our final time to understand. Whether we are in or out. So I had to get that out before we go any further in this lesson. And let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we again stand before you, bringing your word as you sent it through Paul the Apostle, the one you chose to be the apostle and teacher for the Gentiles. That's, that's us. Thank you, Father, for understanding your word. Thank you, Father, for allowing me to speak your word, knowing God. You are directing and you are watering as you see. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. This next thing is topical ministry to unbelievers. Now, ministry to unbelievers. Notice again, the letter was addressed to the church of Rome. It was not addressed to any specific group. It was addressed to the church of Rome, and Paul identified in Romans chapter 1 of his letter how to identify whether or not you are a believer or non-believer. And he gave a list. And what we are to, to do is to self-identify. We are to check that list. And if we find ourselves on that list, you can say that the part of the letter to the unbelievers, you find yourself. Unbelievers were a list that Paul gave, self-identifying whether or not you were in Christ or out of Christ. And he did that in the first part of the letter and went in on to teach about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Minister to unbelievers from Romans chapter 15, verses 15 to 27. Ministry to unbelievers. Now, unbelievers were also in this church. So this ministry is to the church. And as a result of being 
they ministry to the church, the unbelievers were marked by Paul in his letter how to identify yourself, whether or not you are an unbeliever inside this church, the natural church, because there will be no unbelievers and there are no unbelievers in the body of Christ, only in the natural church. Let's look at this from Romans chapter 15, verse 15 to 27. We're going to look at the introduction. Paul is telling the church at Rome. Paul is telling the church at Rome that his letter to them is in boldness because of the grace that is given to him by God that he should be the minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, ministering the gospel of God. Paul was called by Jesus himself to minister the gospel of God to the Gentiles. And that was after he arose from the dead, not while he was alive and walking around. So Paul had it, it marked all over him. This is so that Gentile might be accepted by the sanctification, by the sanctification of the Holy Ghost, of the Holy Ghost. This shows that only the gospel of God can bring salvation by the Holy Ghost. Only the gospel of God can bring salvation by the Holy Ghost. Paul makes it very clear that he is the apostle to the Gentiles. He makes it very clear that he is the apostle to the Gentiles, which shows that the, the teachings and writings and messages of Paul should be paid attention to by those of us who are not Jews and in Christ. We should pay attention to what Paul has said to us and is saying to us today. He also made it clear that Peter was the apostle to the nation of Israel, the Jew, confirmed in Galatians chapter 2, 8 and 9 by Paul. That's personal reading and study. That's personal reading and study. By reading this last chapter of the book of Romans, you will see all of the people that Paul knew. You will find that most of them were Gentiles. You will find that most of them were Gentiles. The church of Rome was larger a Gentile church a body of believers, a Gentile church. He was fully qualified for this office by his background, training, and experience. He was Jewish born. He spoke Hebrew. He was a Roman citizen. He had Jewish training in the Greek culture and knew the law of Moses. So you can see God picked and chose a well-qualified man, and he prepared Paul before he sent him out to us, the Gentiles. So that's why we really need to pay attention to Paul's teaching to the church today. God chose a well-qualified person for this bold position. Notice this. Paul had a bold position. If you are in God, and you say you have been called a priest, you are in a bold position, which means you must speak for God instructs you to speak without any apology, because God does not apologize for what he says, because his word is for salvation. A bold man who God himself called for the task. When you are called by God, you are called to be a minister of Jesus Christ to bring salvation. And that means you got to be bold. You got to bring it like he left it, or it will not be his words. There is no other name under heaven by which a man can be saved other than the name of Jesus. Paul said, You are to preach. This is this. Paul said you ought to preach Jesus, and that if you do not, you are preaching judgment on yourself. That's a woe. And Paul said that about himself and to the Corinthians. 
in first Corinthians book, he said, if I do not preach Christ, I am preaching woe on myself. And that's damnation and judgment. Paul says, so I will not preach damnation and judgment on myself. I'm going to preach Jesus. This was said by Paul to the Corinthians, to another church in Greece, to another church in Greece. So we need to grab hold to what Paul said, because you can't supplant his instructions, because his instruction came from the risen Lord, and he gave it to him to bring to us, the Gentiles, because we're non-Jewish, only way we become Jewish is be adopted, be Jew circumcised of the heart. That's how we become Jewish, circumcised of the heart. So we got to pay attention. And we avoid Paul's word. And sure, anything else, you are not preaching Jesus. And you're preaching a curse on yourself. And we have to re relay again, as way back in Jeremiah, it said many are called out of the seats of their own hearts. And you can identify those who are called out of the seats of their own heart because they're not preaching to Christ. They're not preaching Jesus. They're preaching woes unto themselves. That's what the book says in the Old Testament. And Paul brought a lot of that forward. And then he goes on to say, again in Jeremiah, if you know this to be the occasion, and you still follow after this man or this woman or this person, you as well as they will be destroyed. So don't let God's judgment fall upon you. Simply because Christ is not preached, Christ is not heard, Christ is not believed, you put a war on yourself. And you want to see how strong that war is when you believe in something that is not Christ, the Christ of salvation? Read Matthew chapter 4, and you'll see where you will end up, and you don't want that. And you will see that in that certain chapter, God says he never knew you when you call him Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. He said, I've never known you. Every time you call my name, I pay no attention to you because you're not and was not in his body. And on that judgment day, when they go before God and say, I did this in your name, that includes all false believers, pastors, teachers, members. That includes all who are not in Christ. He said, they come before me and said, Lord, Lord, I've done this in your name. I taught in your name. I taught Sunday school in your name. I preached in your name. I sang in the choir in your name. I collected money in your name. Jesus said, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I have never known you. And none of us won't be found to be cast aside and cast away by the master. Because where you've been cast to is in the lake of fire to be burned forever and ever because you rejected the one true God who brought us salvation. And we need to really get our hands, get our minds, get our hearts around what Paul has taught and is teaching. And to do that, you should take aside to yourself and study the book of Romans from Romans chapter 1. In Romans chapter 16, he says, study to show yourself, yourself, not somebody else telling you that you know what you're doing. He said, to show yourself approved unto God. you got to show your own self approved unto God. Nobody can talk your way by God. you got to show your own self approved unto God. A workman that needs not be ashamed. And a woman needs to be not be, well, ashamed. We saw that. In Matthew 4, the, the ones who were ashamed, they walked up and said, I've done it all as you name. And he said, I've never known you. That's a workman who is ashamed that's going to be a cast away. And I, I got to emphasize that because this is what God has been laying on my heart to say, teach, and speak in this last portion of this letter because I probably will never get a chance to stand here and say it again. And those of you who hear me, don't toss it aside. Those of you who don't hear me, pick it up. Because God is coming. 
in his own way and his own time. Thank you. Now we go to verse 15 and 16. Nevertheless, brethren, I have written. Now, this is Paul saying, nevertheless, brethren. See, he called all persons in the Christian community brethren. Whether you were wheat or tear, he called you brethren. And he knew that was wheat and tear together sitting there because he identified that in Romans chapter 1. But he referred all to him as brethren because he knew that some was going to recover. So therefore, he wanted them to self-identify to see where you were in Christ. Nevertheless, brethren, I have written the more boldly. See, he's telling you why he writing bold, where you can understand what he's saying. I have written the more boldly to you. To you. Why? Putting you in mind because of the grace God that is given to me. God gave Paul the grace to speak bold to them, the Gentiles in the Roman church and other places. God gave him this boldness to speak. If you have been called by God, you should be speaking with boldness his word. And Paul said, I speak with boldness because I have been given the grace of God. If you say that you have been called a preach or teach, you have you should be speaking bold because you have been given the grace of God to be a spoken for God, to represent him. Not everybody who say is a spoken for God. That I should be the minister is what Paul is telling you. That I should be the minister of Jesus Christ. Paul said that I, that he should be the minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, to us all. Paul said that I should be the minister to the Gentiles, all of us who are non-Jews. I am the minister. I am the one that our Lord and Savior gave the word to. I am the one who saw the resurrected Lord who gave me the instruction to tell you. And it's transitory. It wasn't just back then. It moved even to today. Even to today. Ministering the gospel of God. That the offering up of the Gentile, that the offering up of us, the Gentile, might be accessible. If you're not following the word of God, as he gave it to Paul to bring to us, you're not following the instruction that God left. Because the instruction was passed on to us from Paul. And he said, that's what makes us acceptable. If you don't know, do that, you're not acceptable. Being sanctified by the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. Paul testifies. Testifies that his ministry to the Gentiles, he tells them that the, in view of his apostate office to the Gentiles, that he writes more boldly to them. He's writing bold to them because he has been anointed by God. He tells them that he was ordained. Listen to this. He tells them that he was ordained by Jesus Christ to minister to them. He was ordained to minister to the Gentiles. The gospel of God. The gospel of God. That your conversation or that means that your life or life may be acceptable to God bringing sanctification by the Holy Ghost. Your life got to be acceptable to God and is brought into that acceptability by the Holy Ghost. Which means if you have not the Holy Ghost, you will never be acceptable. Jesus said in the New Testament writings, if you have not the Spirit of Christ, you're not of His. You can't talk your way by Him. You can't sing your way by Him. You can't pray your way by him. you got to be in the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is the body of Christ. That's what it is. If you say that you can come any other way, you say, I am the door. I am the door. I am the way. If you try to come any other way, you are as a thief and a robber. The only way you can come is through me. You can only come to God. By the Holy Ghost. 
Some of us think we can fool God. We fool him by so-called singing. We go to him, fool, try to fool him by so-called praying. He, he even responded to that one time. He said, when you pray, don't be at the Pharisees, seeming to be righteous, going around making these loud and long prayers, seeming to be righteous, thinking that God hear you. He said, I don't hear you. I don't hear you. He said, if you're going to do something, be like this. Two men go in the temple to pray. One was a publican and one was the so-called Jew. A publican was a sinner. They walked into the temple to pray. The publican got on his knees. Watch it, y'all, because I ain't calling no names, but you know who you are, because God is allowing this to come forth. The publican said, Lord, I've done this in your name. Lord, I've given my tithe. Lord, I pay my offering. Lord, I have taken care of the poor. All of this the publican was boasting about. And he said, don't boast in God. The sinner did one thing. And when he gave his parable, he let us answer this himself. He said, the sinner only said one thing. Lord, have mercy upon me, the sinner. That's all the sinner said. And Jesus turned around to the crowd and said, who do you think shall go home justified? And he left that answer up to us. And if you look at, again, Matthew 4, you see what happened to the boasting Pharisee, to the boasting publican. Depart from me. I never knew you. I never knew you. So you don't want to be found that way. The Holy Ghost sanctified you and nothing else. The Holy Ghost sanctified you and nothing else. And Acts chapter 20, 22, read that yourself and study it. And that was, that was Peter and somebody else in Acts. Actually, it was Luke who wrote Acts. But you need to read that because it's all walk hand in hand. It does not digress. Verse 15 through 17. I have therefore, whereof I may glory through, I may glory through. Some people call it glory. What are you talking about glory? So let's see what we're talking about when we say glory. Paul identifies. What glory is. When he said, I came to glorify his name. I came to glorify his name. Let's look at that. And these things which pertain to Christ. In verse 17, Paul states in Romans 3, three things to glorify through Jesus. Three things to glorify through Jesus. There are other things, but these three, Paul single life. And Romans chapter 5, verse 1, peace. And Romans chapter 6, verse 23, eternal life. Peace, and then life itself in Romans chapter 6, verse 11. There are other things that Paul mentioned in other letters, but these three were dominant as to why he glorified in Christ. So when you say you are glorifying in Christ, what are you doing? What are you glorifying in? Paul is telling you. What he glorifies in, he's telling you. He's telling you. We're going to look at um, verse 14. we got to look at that. Now, 17, 18. He said, I was not there. Verse 16. This is a heavy verse, class. This is a verse that should be paid attention to. 
for I would not dare to speak of any of those things which Christ has not wrought in me to make the Gentiles obedient by word and deed. By word and deed. Now what is he saying? Paul saying, do I have the authority and power? I am not going to say things that Christ did not put in my heart and my mouth to say to the Gentiles. Paul is warning of self-importance. Let me say it again. Paul is warning of self-importance in the church by persons with prominent positions. The prominent position. It is easy to be overcome with a sense of importance in a position that you hold in a natural situation, a natural congregation, a natural church. Paul is warning about that. No one is indispensable, but some think they are. No one in God is indispensable, but some think they are. Some think that church cannot operate with them without them. That's not true. You are deceiving yourself. We need to see ourselves as did Paul. He saw himself as God's instrument only. He saw himself as God's instrument and only. Mere clay in God's, mere clay in God's hand. Shaped for this purpose. Shaped for his purpose. Do you see yourself as a teacher of the word of God? Or the preacher of the word of God? Shaped for that purpose only? Are you making yourself more important than you are? Walking away, I know the word. I know the scripture with your chest hanging all out. There's nobody in the body of grace that is not indispensable, as some of us think. All of us, we're just mere clay in the hands of the potter. And the potter is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So we need to get off that horse. Get out of that head and high mindedness that we are so important. Our Lord and Savior don't need any of us. He could have done it all himself. But he chose to take the way that he took that we may understand that he gave us our own mind to accept or reject him. To be in him as a vessel of honor versus a vessel of dishonor. Now, if you were that clay that was dishonor, guess what he does to that? He talks you aside. Be that clay, the honor, the vessel of honor. God used Paul to bring the Gentile in obedience to the gospel. In obedience to the gospel, not in obedience to himself. He didn't use it to bring him himself importance to himself. He didn't use it to uh, have people looking at him because he was so strong and so powerful. He was using the gospel to bring obedience to God. To God. Do we do that? Do we do that? Or do we use the gospel to bring obedience to ourselves? To be so big. To be so self-righteous. You, you got a judgment coming. Is that what you're doing? Misusing the word of God. Paul could plant the seed. That's God's word. Paul could plant the seed at God's word, but he could not make the Gentile believe. As a teacher, as a preacher, as a pastor, only thing you can do is plant the seed. That's the word of God. You can't make anyone believe. You can only plant the seed. That's the word of God. And Christ said, our Lord and Savior said, you plant our water. That's the word of God. I water. That's the word of God. And then he goes on to say, and God, that's the Holy Ghost, give the increase. You see, you got, you got those three factors you got to go through. And you just one of the three. And you're the weakest of those three because you keep putting yourself in the word of God, making it weak. It got to be delivered like he gave it for it to be watered, nurtured, and matured. 
if you put water it with, with, with nothing, if you weaken it with nothing, the word of God means nothing. It's going to fall on stony ground. If you try to mix yourself in the word of God, it's going to fall on stony ground. The wind will blow it away. You got to be careful because you have to stand before the master one day for just saying, I am speaking for God. I am a preacher. But yet you doing everything but bringing the word of God. Belief was up to them. After seed had been planted, the same as it is today. Belief was up to them when the seed had been planted, the same as it is today. Now, you see why Paul didn't single anybody out? Because the wheat was sitting there with terror. The terror was sitting there with wheat. And when the seed was there, some of the terror became fertile ground, became good ground. And they joined the wheat. And they joined the wheat. Then you look at the fact that some of the wheat who thought they were rooted and grounded in the word of God. When you throw that stuff out, that's not quite accurately. And it started taking the flesh. And it started being pulled away. The wind started blowing away. The Bible said, but every wind of doctrine, they get blown away if they're not rooted. You'll be responsible for that as well. And God says, their blood, their blood is on your head. Do you want that when you face the master? I don't think you do. I wouldn't. That's why when I stand to teach that which I do not understand, I don't say. I only say that which I have read, studied, and the Holy Ghost has given me the understanding. That's all I say. If I can't understand it, I will not say it. That's why Brother Kennedy do not preach commentary. Commentary is another man's opinion. It is not the word of God. So I don't want to teach the word of God, not another man's opinion. Though some of those things that I read does line up with the word of God, I will refer to it. But I won't teach it as it is the word of God. The word of God is the word of God, period. Verse 19. Through mighty signs and wonders by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and around about unto Lacrinius, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. Oh, what he said, I have fully preached. I didn't add nothing else to it. I preached it the way it was given to me. I preach it the way it came. When I do that, I know the seed is going to hit fertile ground. I know Christ is going to water it, and I know God is going to make it mature. That's the only way it's going to work. Paul sums up that he has fully, fully, not partially, not saying something that uh, I don't think, uh, Paul never once said, I don't intend to make anybody mad. Paul said, just the opposite. He said, I, I'm saying this because he had given me the boldness to repeat his words. You don't apologize for God. If anyone gets angry, they're not angry at you. They get angry at the word of God. Because the only thing you're doing is repeating the word of God. So their anger is not with you. It's with God. As Samuel went to God and said, they're rejecting me. They're rejecting me. God told Samuel, listen, Samuel. They're not rejecting you. They're rejecting me. You told them my word, and my word called them to reject me, not you. So you got to understand, when you reject the word of God from the mouth of one of his chosen speakers, you're not rejecting that person. You're rejecting the word of God. You're rejecting God. We need to understand that. I know that's a little hard to understand, but I understand it. But I had to grow through that understanding because I did not always understand it. Paul sums up that he fully preached the gospel of Christ and confirmed the gospel and confirmed the gospel. The gospel was confirmed by signs and wonders and by the power of the Spirit of God. That's the Holy Ghost. The power of the Spirit of God. That's the Holy Ghost. 
Paul preached the gospel where it had not been heard before. You know, sometimes we sit into a natural congregation. The gospel fully had not been preached. There is a gospel, but it has not been preached fully. How do we, Brother Kenny, how can you say, say that? Peter said this. They, they, they come to you preaching some other gospel. Some other Jesus. And we there, there are people who sit in congregation to hear that kind of some other Jesus and some other gospel. Every week. So they have not fully understood and heard the gospel. But they say, I'm saved. Signs and wonders validated the gospel. Signs and wonders validated the gospel. What are your signs and wonders to validate the gospel that you hear? You told us what it is. Your life is your witness. Your life is your testimony, not your mouth. You validate the gospel. By your life that you live. If you don't have the life of Christ. Humble. That God gave us in the attributes of Christ. You have not validated what you've heard. You are living and deceiving yourself. That you are in Christ. You better. We need to go back and look. At how Paul said we are to self-identify. I found two in that list. That told me up a little bit. When I saw myself in two of those entries in that list, I worked at it. I worked on it. And I'm still working on it to validate my call and position in Christ. So I'm not afraid to admit it because that's my ticket to heaven. And I intend to be, and you should want to be, one of those few. Why do we say that? Because Jesus said, only few are going to make it. Ain't many people going to go to heaven. They said, going to be a few. And then he said, enter in, enter in at the straight way. The straight way is the body of Christ, the church, the body of Christ. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. I am the door. If any other way, you as a thief or a robber, you ain't coming to me. Verse 20 and 21. Yea, so have I strive. To preach the gospel, not where Christ was named, lest I should build upon another man's foundation, but as it is written, to whom he was not spoken of, they shall see, and they shall have not heard, shall understand. This is another mouthful, but you got to study it. It's in the book. Paul states that he has been careful. We really need to pay attention to this as well. Paul said that he had been careful, that means endeavor, not to preach the gospel where Christ was already preached because he was building on another man's foundation. That's, that's hard for some people to grab hold because you want to do, you say you're an evangelist and the only place you go evangelize into a church that call you that you know got a good budget that can pay you a good evangelical meeting salary. You'll go there. But go to a small church that had no budget in the countryside, wherever. You, you can't make it because they have nothing to give you. And you have to pay for your own transportation. You have to pay, pay for your sleep. You have to pay for your eat. You say, I can't go there no more because they didn't take care of me. They didn't give me nothing. I've heard that in my walking with God. He was carefully not to preach what the gospel of God. This shows that Paul went to the Gentiles, not the Jews. Why we say that? The, the gospel has already been preached to the Jews by Peter. And said it again. In Jerusalem, in Rome, and everywhere, Peter had already preached the gospel. And because of the Gentiles being there, they heard the gospel that Peter preached to the Jews. So he didn't say nothing wrong here. He said they had the opportunity to hear the gospel that Peter preached to the Jews. 
This shows that Paul went to the Gentiles, not the Jews. All Paul's letters were written to Gentile congregations. All of Paul's letters were written to Gentile congregations. And one of the problems that we have in order to understand salvation and Christ, we get a lot of pre preaching from the Old Testament. We got a lot of preaching about Old Testament prophets, but they're not going to give you the understanding of salvation. There are 66 books in the Bible. If you're going to have a Bible study, 66 books, it has taken us three months to come to where we are in Rome. If you preach a taught a book a month, you would do it in a year. And he said, in your, all your understanding, get understanding. We got to get an understanding of the word of God. We need to understand that the Old Testament verifies what our Lord and Savior did when he came in the New Testament. When Paul and Peter and the brethren taught and preached, they always used the Old Testament, something from the Old Testament to verify what they were bringing forth in the New. And we need to understand that the Old Testament was a picture of that which was to come. And the New Testament is a picture that is. And we need to understand it. This shows that Paul went to Gentiles, not to Jews. All Paul's letters were written to Gentile congregations. Paul quotes from scriptures. Paul quotes from scriptures. Isaiah chapter 52, verse 15. To show the Gentiles that the prophet Isaiah has spoken about them in prophecy. See, Paul went to Isaiah to confirm what he was saying today. And when we teach and preach the word of God, we should be able and we should do the same thing to confirm the word of God. Why? Because Paul said we ought to do one thing. Preach Jesus. Preach Jesus. Teach Jesus. If you don't, you're bringing a war upon yourself. A war upon yourself. You got to remember that. Verses 22. For which cause also I have been much hindered from coming to you. Now, it seems like a short verse, but I'm just give you a brief thumbnail of it. If you study, you'll find more. So, studying really makes you dig deep. If you study one verse, as you should, it'll take you through the entire Bible. It'll take you to the entire, one verse will take you from Genesis to Revelation, if you study it. Ain't no scholars of one book. You got to be a scholar of the Bible, which is the word of God, the words to salvation. Paul stated that he had desired to visit Rome, but that he was had been greatly hindered from coming to visit. How will you saying here? He was hindered because he it had been his policy not to preach where the gospel had not been preached. Because you already have the, you had the gospel. So that hindered me. So you already had the gospel. You heard it. It was preached there. Who was doing that there? Peter was preaching the gospel there. And as a result of that, the Gentiles had an opportunity to hear the gospel as Peter was preaching it. I was slow to come. You got to refer to verse 20 here. Refer to verse 20. Christ had already been preached in Rome. Christ had already been preached in Rome. Peter was there not for the Gentiles, but for the Jews. But the Gentiles had heard the gospel from him. Isn't that something? But the Gentiles had heard the gospel from him as he preached the gospel. He's talking about Cornelius. <laughs> Cornelius was a 
a Gentile soldier in the Roman Empire. And he was a man who prayed and believed in God. And he prayed often. But one day he was praying. God began to talk to Cornelius. And he began to talk to Peter. At the same time. He told Cornelius. Send for a man named Peter. Simon Peter. And you find him. And he told him where, where to go. At the same time. Peter was hungry on the rooftop. And he was thinking about eating. And God began to work in Peter's life on behalf of Cornelius. God began to show down in visions from heaven all manner of beasts that Peter, being a Jew, also a Jew, considered unworthy to eat. And God said in the vision to Peter, Peter, rise, Peter, slay and eat. Peter said, Lord, nothing unclean has ever entered my mind. And you know that Peter's one of those guys who call Gentiles unclean and dogs. And God said to Peter on the rooftop, do you call what I have created? Unclean? Do you call? You call? You call? He was setting him up. You got to go with these men. Or if you're going to go into a house of a man that you consider unclean. And as Peter was getting up from, up from prayer, there's a knock on his door. And his servant said, There are two men at the door. And they told Peter, Our master has sent for you. And this was Cornelius's servants. Peter followed them and he ended up at the house of a Gentile, a house that he considered unclean and dogs. And when Cornelius saw him coming, see this is the way we should run to God. When Cornelius saw him coming, he got up and ran to him. People pay attention to what Cornelius did and did what Peter's response for. When Cornelius got to Peter, he fell down at Peter's knees. Pay attention to what's coming, coming out here because it's in the book. Peter grabbed Cornelius by the shoulder and said, get up. I'm a man just like you. See, Peter didn't take no special homage because he was an apostle. He told Cornelius, get up on your feet. I'm a man. Just like you. The only one that you bow down to is God. And I am not God. I'm a man just like you. And God fulfilled his calling of Peter in the house of Cornelius. We got to remember those things. And the only way we can understand is study these things. But it can be stored in your memory. And that's the only way we're going to get to our God, our Lord and Savior. You know, when most people die today, you hear people say, they're going on to be with the Lord. So and so and so that. They're going on to be with the Lord. No matter how bad or how and they never stepped into a church or accepted Christ, they're going on to be with the Lord. If you take that as an example, we ain't got no more hell. It's empty. Everybody go to heaven when they die. They're going on to be with the Lord. Don't you fool yourself. If you die without Christ, you're going to hell. No matter what they say. Nobody can put you in heaven or hell but our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Verse 22, 23 to 25. But now having no more place in these parts and having a great desire, these many days, days to come to you, whatsoever I have, whenever or whosoever I take my journey into Spain, I'm going to come. I'm going to come to you when I get ready to go to Spain. That's what you're saying here. For, but now I go into Jerusalem to minister unto the saints. There's a lot happening in between what we just read. Paul said that he have evangelized to the point 
of having no other territory to be vandalized in that area, in that area that he was in and having a great desire to come to visit you these many days. I plan now to come when I take my journey into Spain. Now, this is where studying is required. should have a lot of study here. I will come to you on my journey to Spain. That's what Paul said. In his own record, that he went back to Jerusalem and was taken to Rome as a prisoner. He didn't go on his own. He was taken to Rome as a prisoner. Acts chapter 21, verses 1 through 28, and then chapter 31. You, you, you got to do that yourself. There's no record in scripture or history that Paul ever made it to Spain. That he ever made it to Spain. Paul never got to the church in Rome as a free man. He never got to the church in Rome as a free man. He was kept in prison until he was martyred. He was kept in prison until he was martyred. This word by you implied that when he left Rome, he had hoped the Roman church would assist him on his next missionary journey financially. He thought that was going to be the occurrence. Paul, being martyred, never got to the point with the church where they can assist him on his next missionary journey. Paul said in his letter that he was on his way to Jerusalem to minister to the saints. Paul had planned to visit Rome after Jerusalem. But what happened? Paul was arrested. Paul was placed on a ship. The ship was wrecked. He was on an island with some men. And guess what else? He was bitten by a viper. A viper that will kill you instantly. That did not affect him. Storm came up. Paul was able to preach men on this island. God had other plans for Paul. And the plan that God had for Paul, Paul didn't ever think he was going to be shipwrecked on an island, being bit by a snake. And he even told them how to survive when the ship tore up, grabbed hold of something. None of you, Paul said, would die. Not one of you would die. And guess what? Not one died. See, God had a plan for Paul. One thing we need to understand at this point, God don't tell us his plans. We got to do what? Trust and believe. Faith! Trust. God do not tell us his plans. We have to trust and believe. And what do you mean by trust and believe? The word of God. Not what somebody else tells you. Paul talked us all through Romans. And the only way we're going to get to understand it is a study. Line upon line, precept upon precept, because Brother Kennedy cannot give it all to you. He can only wreck your desirability to understand God and get in that book to see where you are. You'll find out where you are if you study Paul in the book of Romans. You'll see whether or not you're a wheat or a tear. You'll find yourself, whether it be good or bad, look for yourself as Paul described. Verse 26 and 27. For it has pleased them of Macedonia and Achaia to make a certain contribution for the poor saints which are at Jerusalem. It has pleased them verily. And their debtors, they are. Now, we're going to look at this right now. And then we're closing this out of my teaching that God gave it to me. Of this portion of Paul's letter to the Church of Rome. And it has been quite a treasure trove of what the church should be and what the church is in Rome. In Romans, Paul tells us how the church should be. And if we don't find ourselves in this way, we are not in the body of Christ. We are a tear in a natural congregation. Paul was going to Jerusalem because the churches at Macedonia and Achaia had gladly given contribution for the poor saints 
at Jerusalem, which they knew when they knew that he was going there. So they were sending an orphan. Paul states that Gentile Christians were debtors to the Jews who had been used of God to see the scriptures and through whom came according to the flesh. See, they gave the Gentile the understanding of how our God came according to the flesh. He points out that it is right to help Jews in carnal, carnal things. Because of this, Paul said that, because of this, Paul said that after I do this, I will come to you. Now, after I take this offering to Jerusalem, I'm going to come to you by way of Spain. That's in verse 29 of this chapter. Paul never made it as he thought. He never made it to Rome as he thought. God had other plans for him. Now, read Acts 21 for yourself. Study and get to understand that Paul has given us the way to get our Lord and Savior. Paul has shown us how, how we can identify, self-identify ourselves, whether we are in the body of Christ or not. Thank you for paying attention and listening. Bye-bye.